Hello zoology people. Today I want to give you a quick introduction to the phyla chordata. Okay, so there are two groups of chordates. There's the ones that have a backbone and the ones that don't. I'm not going to focus on the chordates that don't have a backbone. There is a small group of them, all of them marine. We're going to focus on the subphyla vertebrata. They all have a backbone. Okay, so chordata. This is the phyla all of my students look forward to. When you take zoology, you're probably only thinking of chordates. Everything you love is a chordate. Everything cuddly is a chordate. You're a chordate. I'm a chordate. Yay, chordata. Okay, so what does it mean to be a chordate? Well, all of us have a notochord and nerve cord. And so this is a cord that goes down our backs that is part of our nervous system. All of us have that. We all have a heart. We are bilateral symmetry. We have complete digestive system. We are deuterostomates, which means the first hole we develop is our anus. Uh, that is unique to just us and the echinoderms, echinodermata. All other animals are protostomates, meaning they get their mouth first. We also have pharyngeal gill slits, a post-anal tail. And you're probably thinking, well, wait a minute. I don't really have a tail. Well, you do when you're a fetus. And so all chordates have a tail when they're a fetus. Some of us lose it before we're born. So the great apes like us, we lose our tail, our postanal tail, before we're born. You're probably thinking, well, I don't have pharyngeal gill slits. There's no gill slits on me. You do when you're a fetus. So we all have pharyngeal gill slits. They just move around and become something else before we're born. So we all have those characteristics. Okay, so let's talk about some of the classes in chordata. These are the classes that we're going to learn. So let's start with fish. There are three classes of fish. We have Agnatha, the jawless fish. These are very ancient fish. We have Chondrichthys. These are the cartilage fish like sharks. And we have Ostichthys. These are the bony fish, which is the majority of fish. So three classes of fish. Then from fish, we have the class amphibia, so the amphibians. These guys are called amphibians because they have two lives, amphi meaning two, so amphibians, uh, two lives. These guys are born in the water, so their eggs have to be in water. They have a like a tadpole life cycle, so they have a larvae form in water where they have gills and then they metamorphosis to have lungs. So those are the amphibians, like frogs and newts and salamanders. The next class is reptilia, so the reptiles. These are like snakes and lizards and tortoises and turtles. So all of those guys, the difference is they have land eggs. So reptiles have made the full move to land. So class reptilia. From reptilia, we then move on to the class aves. So these are the birds. Birds have feathers. They most of them have flight, not all of them, but they have feathers. They are warm blooded, so these guys are uh, endotherms, so they make their own heat, their own temperature, they have hard eggs, and lots of great characteristics about birds, so class aves. And then the last class is mammalia, the mammals. And so mammals are called mammalia because they have mammary glands. All mammals feed their babies milk. They also all have fur, but the main reason you're called a mammal is because you grow up drinking milk from your mom, so mammary glands, mammalia. All right, so this is the phyla chordata. I can't wait to start teaching you about each of the classes. I'll see you guys next time.